I, I felt bad Saturday night. I was driving down to St. Augustine to see a buddy of mine that I hadn't seen in several years. I get a message from Tim. Now, I say at the end of the show that he does our social media. The truth is he does all kinds of different shit. And among his ad hoc responsibilities at the moment is helping Tom's wife, Haley, keep track of all the donations that are pouring in from Vulgarity for Charity. So I glance at the message while I'm driving because I'm bad to the fucking bone. And I learn that we just cracked our $100,000 goal and maxed out the match with four days left to go. And, and sure, I was mostly elated, but I also felt bad because... I was about to walk into my buddy's house and say, yeah, the annual charity fundraiser I do just raised us a fifth of a million dollars. And after that, pretty much anything he'd accomplished in the last four or five years was going to seem lame in comparison, right? So yeah, I got to admit, I have an awful lot to be thankful for today, as do the hundreds and hundreds of families all over the country whose bills are paid, whose lights are back on, whose cars are repaired, whose medicine is stocked up, and whose families are suddenly going to have a much brighter holiday because of you. Let me tell you how generous you motherfuckers are. There's an anonymous donor that agreed to match every dollar we raised up to a hundred grand. But when they found out that you guys maxed that out with like most of a week left in the drive, they upped their match to $125,000, which means you guys are so goddamn generous that a person who was giving a hundred thousand dollars to charity anonymously had to sit back and think, shit, am I really doing enough? Right. Like, oh, so now, like most of you, I got a bunch of family shit going on this week. So I had to record a bit earlier than usual. But even now I'm recording this shit on Monday. We're over one hundred and ten thousand dollars before the match. I'd love to give you a total, but you're going to have to go on uh, Facebook or Twitter or something or wait until next week's episode to find that out. But I'll tell you now, it's going to be a huge fucking number. In fact, I actually had to start writing this diatribe on Friday because of my upcoming trip. And even then, I just wrote in a whole bit where I congratulated you guys for crushing the goal. Right. I like, you know. It would look, we'd been raising almost four grand a day at that point. So it was obvious we were going to hit it. But even if I had to set all that aside, I'd have written the same thing. If I had to bank the diatribe for this episode back in June, I'd have been confident enough to just say, yeah, congratulations, guys. We went fucking nuts and doubled the goal from last year, but you made it happen. Because you know what? We've been doing this fucking podcast for seven years. And in that time, you have never let me down. Every goal that we've put in front of you, everything that we've asked for you to do, every challenge that we've issued to you, you have met and exceeded. When we needed votes to win a podcast award, you came through. When we needed survey results to get advertisers, you broke their fucking records. When I lost my job, I came to you with my hat in my hand. I said, hey, tell you what, if you start paying me for this, I'll do it full time. You said yes. When I said, hey, sure would be nice if Heath could do it full time, too, you said yes. When I said, hey, my buddy Eli sure would like to podcast for a living, too, you said yes. And when we started feeling guilty about monopolizing your boundless generosity and we asked you to prove that atheists are as generous as any other group of people, you said yes so goddamn loud that they can hear it echoing in the churches. You know, we try really hard to return the favor. In seven years of recording this show, we've still never missed a week. We've still never posted an episode late. There was one where it was like misdirected and it came out late, but it was like posted. It was there. It just, you couldn't, it, your RSS feed wouldn't get it. But like, but, and, and, and like, look, this is a week when many of your favorite podcasters are taking the week off. We're here with all new shit again for the 354th week in a row. Still, I know that I've fallen short here and there, right? There have been diatribes where my heart wasn't really into it. There have been weeks when we weren't as funny as you wanted us to be, or when we didn't address the story or the controversy that you wanted us to address, or when the audio quality has been subpar, or when a mistake slipped into the edit. We've been late getting our Patreon rewards out. I'm way behind getting the diatribe books together. It's taken us nearly a full year to work our way through all the vulgarity for charity roasts last time we did this, and we still missed a few. And I'm not pointing any of that out in an effort at modesty. By the time you hear this, we may have raised a quarter of a million dollars for families in need. Believe me, I'm not going to be feeling modest anytime soon. But I bring it up because I want to be clear that I don't have the same unblemished track record as you guys do. I know that we've fallen short on a few goals, specifically promises that we've made in relation to fundraising goals. I mean, fuck, we promised to eat a Jim Baker bucket as part of a fundraiser, and it took nearly two years for us to make good on that. And, and there may be those of you with long memories that fear I'm about to do that again. See, as you probably recall, the only premise we made this year beyond the roasts was that if we reached our $100,000 goal and maxed out the match, I'd quit smoking. Cigarettes. Got to be super clear on that. I'm quitting tobacco, unless it's a blunt wrapper. And, and that's really hard to do, or so I hear. Never tried it myself, but I've heard it's very difficult. And maybe some of you fear that I don't have what it takes, that I won't be able to make good on this commitment. 
that anybody who can work himself into an apoplectic rage about exit 32B or people who don't put away their shopping carts will rip his own head from his neck within 48 hours of nicotine withdrawal. And that's fair. I deserve that. But I'm pretty confident on this one. And here's why. You. See, I hate to admit this, but I've been using you this whole time. The the charity, too. I realized earlier this year that this was my fucking year. I needed to do it. It was a now or never spot with cigarettes. I needed to give them the fuck up, but I didn't think I could do it on my own. And that's why I tied it to this charity. My own health was not enough to carry me through it. My desire to once more be allowed within 100 feet of the entrance wasn't enough to do it. The thousands of dollars I piss away every year buying my own cancer wasn't enough to do it. But if there's anything strong enough... It's going to be a commitment that I made to you. And and I know that that's cheesy as all hell, but it's the truth. And you know what? I'm about to quit smoking, so it's probably going to be a while before I can manage one of these sweet sentimental diatribes again. So I might as well get it out while I can. Happy Thanksgiving, folks.